Blog Talk Radio. Well, it's Sunday, it's 5 o'clock, and it's Xandermonium, the talk show that gets you talking. I'm your host, Xander Gibb, and on today's show, I will be, along with my guest, Tony Lasaco, looking at the news of the world and the state of the nation. More to come in a mere moment. Um, you can inter- interact with us during the show in the chat room at the bottom of the page. And you can also call us with questions or comments or anything you want to share with us on 347-884-9061. That's 347-884-9061. Um, you can also tweet me, um, even though I'm suspended. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, I can still see your tweets. Uh, if you want to tweet a question, if you're too shy to ask or a comment, we'll share on the air for you. My Twitter handle is at Xander Gibb, X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B, um, but you can't tweet Tony, but I think he is in the chat. So as per usual, the last section of the show is dedicated to Watch Your Beef. Call in and tell us um, what or who is pissing you off, uh, what, what your soapbox item is this week, what you want to shout about. Um, you can get it all off your chest at 347-884-9061. So don't forget to check out my revamped website, www.zandergib.biz. That's www.zandergib.biz. And um, if you go to the radio page um, and click, click Listen Live, you can uh, get to the show link um, from there rather than um, having to go to b- directly to Blog Talk. Um, thanks uh, so much to Brody for all his help and advice uh, with setting up my website, uh, the new version, uh, old fogey that I am. Um, so in order to quell the comments um, and rumors from naysayers and haters, uh, yes, I am currently suspended from Twitter. I was suspended for displaying the verification symbol. Now, I meet the criteria um, to have um, verification on Twitter, um, and I also have a link from my website to uh, Twitter. I mean, the, the cleaning lady for the Kardashians uh, can get verified, so you know what the fuck is going on. Um, why wouldn't they verify me? I self-verified myself as a protest, and it was a joke, and so I'm in Twitter jail uh, for a few days, but fear not, I will be back. Uh, After speaking to Twitter, I found out they've had several complaints. Now, they told me they had 25 from one individual, and the content was very interesting, Uh, even mentioning my religious status. Um, So, uh, you know who you are. You Nazi. Now, suspensions for harassment are pending for some complainers. It's about time people on social media just tried to live and let live instead of competing and attacking and encouraging others to do so. So, like I said, I will be back soon, ready and raring to exercise my right to free speech. Block me, suspend me, delete me. You ain't ever going to defeat me. So, my guest today... Um, is Tony Laseco, a libertarian freethinker and political commentator. Tony lives in Florida, and I bet he's enjoying the sunshine today. And he's also my friend for his sins, and he's a regular, regular, rung teeth in today, contributor on this show. So, Zan fans, I give you Tony. Welcome to the show, Tony. You're live on Xandermonium. Thanks, Xander. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's not so sunny here in Florida right now. It's about to rain. Isn't it? I thought it would be. It's it's quite. It was sunny here, and then it just went dark. But uh, I'm I'm hoping the sun's gonna come back out. I don't like this hideous heat with like uh, with like no sunshine. It, it almost feels odd. Yeah. So how has your week been? Well, my week's been good. I mean, I was just. Uh, a little late checking into your queue here just to check on the news, and it looks like a lot's happened over the weekend. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I thought I thought we'd start with some things that were kind of really pertinent to us, um, um, uh, namely the fact uh, that there was a historic Supreme Court 
uh, judgment this week uh, with a flourish of major rulings that marked a bitter dispute, defeat for racial minorities and groundbreaking victory for gay people um, all in the space of a day. And the justices struck down, to, down parts of federal laws, the Voting Rights Act and the Defense of Marriage Act, that were passed with a huge uh, bipartisan um, majority. I mean, Delmer is dead. Isn't isn't that a reason to celebrate? Don't you think? It is. It, it, just not even from my own lifestyle or situation. It's reason to celebrate and cheer as a libertarian. The Supreme Court right. actually did the right thing for once. They went with the Constitution and human rights. Go figure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it was amazing. I mean, it's uh, I, I, I still have no um, idea why the, there is such uh, negative response um, from conservatives about the defense of, uh, with regards to the defense of marriage, because because their argument is about holy matrimony and not and not marriage, which are two different things. Um, you know, you can go into any town hall in any city in the United States. Uh, and get married, and I mean, I don't know what the content of that marriage is. I don't even know if there's any talk of God. I mean, I, I believe you can ask for God to be left out of it. So and, only and matrimony. Just... Go on. Go ahead, Xander. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, holy matrimony and marriage are absolutely two different things. They are two different things, and that was one of the striking things about the opinion. I mean, the the court didn't just turn over Doma, which isn't being talked to, talked about, they stomped on it and, like, literally obliterated it into the ground. I mean, they took it a step further, saying this is a basic issue of human rights. You don't Absolutely. create second-class citizens in the United States. And that's very significant. The court didn't just rule or cop out this time. They actually issued judicial activism. I mean, that's something they haven't done since the days of civil rights. Ironically, like you said, the two decisions – one down on the same time, one pouncing on civil rights and a historic precedent set by the court, and the other creating a new one. It's kind of interesting. Absolutely, I think I think we're um, we're, we're marking a new age um, in, in, in civil rights, and um, I, I kind of uh, I'm hoping that it kind of goes full circle because because for me, um, what most pe- what most gay people that I know want. Um, Want want the, the the marriage thing for is is for for the for the rights that come with that. Not so they can say, oh look, we're married, we're like a heterosexual couple. Um, but for instance, two two gay people that live together don't get the same uh, pension benefits, the same uh, the same rights in the hospital. I mean, people people uh, who have been in relationships for twenty years uh, get turned away at the hospital um, and are told they don't have any right or any say. But if that was someone's girlfriend, you know, they would they would do it kind of right away. It, 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 it's a fundamental, these things are fundamental human rights. And, and as a taxpayer, uh, you would expect the same rights as everybody else, surely. And, and you know something, as a, as a libertarian, which I am calling myself nowadays, I take a very interesting view of the issue. I definitely, I mean, my objection is more along the lines of DOMA. DOMA should have never been passed to begin with. It was unconstitutional. When the federal government, I'd be just against DOMA if the if the federal government issued a law saying gay marriage was recognized. I would be just yeah. as opposed to it because it's yeah. not the federal government's job. It's against the government's role in our society to tell us what holy matrimony is and isn't. Like you said, there's certain fundamental uh, financial rights that come along with that, but it, they were out of place to begin with. This law was entirely unconstitutional. I do take issue with the gay community at, at, and the rights activists, as my earlier Facebook post said, for not for putting the, heart, uh, the, the course before the heart, excuse me, the, the horse before the cart, so to speak, because it's still legal in many states to fire somebody right. just because they're gay. And I think that issue should have been adjust, ad- addressed first. I mean, I'm not saying this wasn't a valid issue, but I think it was more about touchy feeling, Absolutely. wanting to feel good than civil rights. Because to me, a bigger civil rights issue is the fact that, you know, if Walmart, if I worked at Walmart and they found out I, I was gay, 
they could fire me without cause. To me, that's a bigger yeah. issue, and that's what should be addressed right now is that issue. This is a twofold problem for me. Um, now, I know, I know the libertarian ideology is, is, is smaller government, but for me, part of the problem is that we have um, federal laws and state laws, and, and federal laws and state laws are sometimes in opposition to one another. I'm speaking of someone that, that, that's grown up in the United Kingdom, um, like the law is the law is the law. So it's very confusing. You know, you can be in one state um, on, on something be legal and be in another state and, and, and it be totally illegal. So for me, that's kind of problematic. That there, there should be a bit more um, overlap for me. Um, and secondly, uh, the other thing that comes into play for me is the separation of church and state. Because, because if there is a true separation of church and state, then none of these decisions that are made that affect our lives should be based upon anything to do with religiosity. Because when it is, that, that there is no separation of church and state. And for me, that's a major concern because we're not all Christians. We're, you know, there are, this, this is a multi-faith nation. Um, well, someone told me um, the other day, um, a couple of weeks ago, that when that separation of church and state, um, sorry, when the, when the Freedom of Religion um, Act was, was, um, uh, was written in, um, basically they were talking about any Christian religion so to me, it's all it's all effed up fr from the start. You know, we do need to be working towards, uh, you know, the the ideologies of the Constitution. But but most people don't see the Constitution as a working document. But but I do. Do you? Um, re repeat that again, please. You broke up, Xander. Um. Do, do you see the uh, Constitution as a working document? Like, do you see it as a, that it's set in stone, or do you see it's something that we should be changing? Because obviously it was written over 200 years ago, and when it was written, you know, even just the, the right to bear arms uh, point in the Constitution, uh, you know, when it was written, the the most lethal weapon was a musket. So obviously, you know, they had they had to factor in some, some uh, you know, this is why we have amendments. They have to factor in some some possible changes because the times change and, uh, and and things change in general. It's interesting you should ask that. I was just thinking about that yesterday, and I, there's a basic rift in this country between strict interpretationists of the Constitution, whether it's Republican, conservative, libertarian, just the Constitution and nothing but, and progressives who feel, well, that document's out of date. We need to go with the changing times, and that's the basic division. And I think in a way, I, it pains me to say this as a libertarian, but I think in a way both sides are right because governments change all the time. I mean, we just had constitutions written in Egypt and other countries. Forms of government and structures of government change. And I think the strict, the people that want to go just by the Constitution and only what's in it, it's a great document. It was created by our founding fathers to give us structure, but even the founding fathers had a process within it for amendments, recognizing the need for change. Nobody right. said that the document was going to be eternal and unchanged. That was never an allegation made by the founding fathers. And I think we're living in a new century and a new world. However, with that being said, if you want to change the Constitution, then do it correctly. Hold another convention create an amendment, don't stomp on it and ignore it. And that's my thing, right. and that, that's where I come from on that perspective. You can't, for instance, with the right to privacy, okay, that's not even technically in the Constitution, but the Supreme Court said it's there with abortion right. Roe v. Wade. So there's an established right to privacy according to the court in the Constitution. Well, you can't say there's a right to privacy and then ignore that because national security comes up, for instance. Or you can't say, right. oh, everybody's got equal protection under law, but we don't like the way this gay marriage thing is going, so we're going to get around that and pass a law. What you have to do then is go back and update the Constitution or throw the whole thing out and create a new one. Because if right. it's really that outdated, then we need to get together and have a new form of government and, and see I, people I think, don't want to deal with that. I think I, you're absolutely right, and, 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 that, and that scene, but that ideology is seen as radical. It's a scary idea that people would say that way. Um, 
But, you know, the, the, other, the other point um, about this for me is that the Constitution is kind of like the Bible, and I've used this, I've used this example before. <laughs> people want to pick, choose, um, like uh, people say, oh, I'm this and I'm that, and, and I follow the Bible, but they only follow what they want to follow that works for them. And, and there's an element of that with constitutional issues because, because they forget, they forget um, some of the things that are in the Constitution. And the other point is that a lot of the things that are in the Constitution are in, in direct conflict uh, with one another. So, so where do you go? Where do you go with that? I, I do think, I do think the Constitution is a wonderful ideology. Um, what it's supposed to do is give us rights, but also what it does is it restricts our rights um, for some people, um, but not for others. Um, I mean, the thing, the thing that really concerned me last week. You know, some of the opponents of gay marriage in California filed a petition uh, with the Supreme Court asking the justices to halt same-sex weddings taking place in California. And, right. and to me, it's like, why, why does the fact that two people of the same sex want to get married concern you that much that you will go to court about it? Oh, it's tearing at the fabric of, the, of society. What is the societal fabric that is so... Uh, so flimsy um, that that it's gonna be torn by me marrying someone I love and and, and getting the same rights as you and your wife. You know what I mean? Well, well, you, well, you know, Xander, and I'll say in advance before somebody hangs up on me or tries to kill me here, I'm being sarcastic. But I I am for the traditional. It, I am. I stand beside them in their traditional definition of marriage. I mean, they want the traditional definition of marriage and family values, right? That's what they said. This right. is destroying family value and therefore traditional marriage. So I support them 100% on that and their fight. And we should go back to the traditional definition of marriage. And men should be able to rape women, therefore, and then take them as their wives, and that's their, their wife. Or we should arrange right. marriages and nobody should have the freedom to love another individual and the parents should get together, exchange financial forms in the United States because that is the traditional definition of marriage historically. Absolutely. And, and so I, that's I, the I think hypocrisy it, of it. They want traditional marriage according to their view of what a marriage is. It's disgusting. See, Rush Limbaugh can be married several times but doesn't want me to marry another man. It, it, it's total hypocrisy. It's kind of do as I say, not as I do. And, and the concern for me is, you know, this is America. You know, we should be the front runners um, in equality. Um, but unfortunately, with a lot of things, we're not. I mean, how come in 2013 that the United Kingdom has uh, uh, better uh, better rights um, for gay people than America? You know, it's it's to me it's ridiculous. I think that the United States. And, you know, I don't want to get into it unless you do, actually, but I think that we're being called out as a country on a lot of our hypocrisy right now that relates to right. other issues. And we, this country has said it stands for democracy and human rights, but, for instance, we have one of the world's highest pop populations of incarcerated people. We're one of the few countries right. with the death penalty on the table. I mean, we, we right. talk about freedom and democracy, but you know what? we got a lot of problems ourselves that we're not so free and we don't have very democratic values. You know, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I really don't. I think there's a lot, there's a lot that needs changing. And, and I love that the excuse is always, Oh, we can, we can't do everything at once. All right, then. Well, well, that's fine. <laughs> you know, we, we criticize other countries. Um, like, like this week, um, did you hear Jennifer Lopez sang happy birthday to the leader of Turkmenistan? Um, during her show, um, but but afterwards, um, her rep said that she wouldn't have performed if she'd known that there were all the human rights violations that were going on. I mean, you know, what's that? What's that phrase? Um, I can't think what the phrase is. It's something like, you know, you um, you got to get your own house in order before you point at others, kind of thing. And I think yes, that, um, I think that all the, I mean, it's not on the same scale, but. There are there are some terrible human rights atrocities in other countries, like um, in in the Middle East, gay people being killed for being gay. Um, but there are um, 
but there are uh, other uh, human rights violations that that, that that go on here. You know, sex trafficking, and you know, I know they try and get a lid on it and stuff, but it, it you know, it doesn't happen. You know, I, I personally, I think um, that that countries like Turkmenistan um, that have human rights violations, um, Russia, the Middle East, we should we should cease trading with them and stop giving them aid. Um, because that's where you, what, that's how you enforce change. You hit people where it hurts. And if you hit them in the pocket, if you stop giving them money and trading with them, they're going to make changes. But that's not going to happen because we're a capitalist country. We're never going to say we're not going to trade with you because of your human rights violations. But that would be the correct thing to do. And, and see, it's so, there are so many, you have the politicians that make laws, and I know everybody loves to pick on the politicians. They're well-intended, I do believe, and I could rant about Congress all day long and its ineffectiveness, but the thing is, lawyers write these things in assistance, and there's systems in place where special interests are locked in to protect their very interests. I mean, there's a story behind every story, and that's what I'm finding out more and more as I read the alternative news. There's usually a story behind every story behind every story in the news, and it comes across to the people as one thing. But really, in reality, there's a lot of powerful people behind the scenes manipulating the law to get what they want. But you know, but you know what is actually behind all, and and it's funny. Um, I, I I've I've been trying to do some research on this lately, but people try, people bandy around that um, uh, that phrase military industrial complex. Um, uh, yes. But uh, and it was and it was a phrase that was uh, it was a phrase that was. Um, uh, first used by uh, Dwight Eisenhower, I believe. And um, a few weeks ago, I had um, Gina Loudon on the show, uh, Dr. Gina Loudon, who, who's a conservative, and I see eye to eye with her on lots of things. Um, and you know my ideology is that I really am kind of uh, right. want to work with everybody for a better America. And, and we were talking about how um, on both sides, um, on both sides of the aisle, uh, with both Republicans and conserv sorry, but with both Democrats and conservatives, um, that there is this background with the, the military industrial complex, that, that it's all about money, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, it's, it's all kind of pre-written and pre-arranged and pre-agreed, even wars and things like that. And I find that totally alarming. It's very alarming, and once again, and you know, there's a big difference between having an opinion and a theory and knowing something. You know, I'll state this is just speculation on my part. For example, and you know, I'm not getting into it because I could rant on it for hours about the NSA spying thing. I've questioned in my mind who is Eric Snowden really working for, and it's just speculation on my part, purely speculation. But the thing. The thing is, who is he really, and did they want this leak to begin with, and who is he really working for? Like, now there's stories that the European Union's pissed and this and that, and it's like, this guy just didn't do this on his own, and they, they can find anybody in the world he's revealing, but they can't get him. Something's not right with the picture. You know, Some, something's it. behind it. We, no. Just one second, Tony. We have a caller. I'm just going to bring them online. Sure. Hi, caller. You're live on Zandermonium. Uh, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Hi, Xander. This is Sunday, and I'm calling from Birmingham, Alabama. Hi, Sunday. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. I'm Thank so you. Welcome to through. the show. Okay. Well, you know, you were talking about um, the countries that have all the civil rights um, violations and, you know, that we should, like, withhold aid to them because hitting them in their pocketbook is, is where you do it. Okay. Well, right. this is my... This is my uh, theory on the whole gay rights thing. Gay Americans have the, the highest concentration disposable income in this country. To right. me, that spell money spells politics. I mean, it just equals politics right there. It's just money, you know, where the money is, that, that's where the vote goes, as far as I'm concerned. Right. When gays decide to really get mil- militant with their money, is when you're going to see more civil rights for the gays. Um, Absolutely. You, you guys need, 
you guys absolutely have to. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how it could be done, but if there were some way to harness all of the gay spending dollar in this country and making it accountable, just like in, a, in apartheid countries where people were, were picketing all co- companies that, that, that had uh, apartheid dealings, if somehow right. the gay community could do that with their income in this country, I think there would be such a, until they got their civil rights, that there would be such a tremendous, that would be such a tremendous thing to harness. Absolutely. I mean, I think it happens uh, on a, on a very small scale, and the pink the pink dollar is is very ex- existent. And 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 take for instance the the, the company Chick Fil A. Gay people, what, you know, gay people stop spending money at places when Target, for instance, donated yeah, exactly. money to Tom Amherst's campaign, um, who two is great, openly you know, homophobic two great and a lot of. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was agreeing with you. Those are two great examples just within the past yeah. couple of years. Yeah. And I, um, just, I don't was, see was, why There have been a few others, but I can't I think offhand. But, but you are right. Some some gay group, some yeah. gay um, organization, uh, I don't know, maybe Stonewall, needs to, to spearhead yeah. this. Um, and even and even have something on the website to say don't don't spend with these people. I mean, I've actually heard. I, I somebody actually said to me because I, I I obviously um, actively campaigned against Chick Fil A with the with the shit that they said. I was told that that was un-American. I'm I'm sorry, but that is totally American. It's totally you know? American. If you f with me and mine, then then I'm gonna f with you. Frankly, I'm yep. not going to spend my money with any organization um, that, uh, that, that, that that treats uh, gay people or any other denomination badly. There was um, there was in England, and I'm I'm not going to mention the name, but there was a car rental company um, that were proving to be uh, asking for higher deposits from ethnic minorities, um, and it came out, and everybody stopped using them. You know, to me, yeah, um, as a company, a what you put book. out there and what you do affects sales. And if you, and if it's not a company um, you're big at picketing, you should be you should be picketing anything and everybody that you, the people are opposing you. And, and the people that are opposing you are just as liable as anybody else in this country. Um, who are they supporting? Who do they have ties with? Who are they, you know, investing their money with? And I would just start getting on everybody's shit and just just start hacking away at it. We're going to, you know, we're just going to, it's, I don't know. Maybe I, what do you I, think about I, that, maybe, Tony? I'm going off on the wrong Do you agree trip, with what? Maybe. Well, first of all, let me take the opportunity to say I was wrong on an issue. I had defended, if you recall, Xander, Chick-fil-A adamantly. And I might have even been on the opposite side of that one thing. I knew that was when we first became friends, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yes, it was. And I was saying, you know what, Chick-fil-A has a right to their views, respect their views, you know, don't hurt them, da, da, da. it's just their view, you're violating their rights. Well, after the Supreme Court decision, and as I've always said, I'm the first person who says when he's wrong. After the Supreme Court decision, Chick-fil-A issued a tweet talking about how Obama, I'm paraphrasing, but basically how Obama, the all it was, and how Fit, you know, this country's gone to crap because of the decision. And when I read that, I was so sad because it, I was one of their most adamant defenders saying, you know what, we can't do this to these people. They have a right to their views. But their true colors shine through in that. And I just right. I felt bad. I was like, well, I defended these, and now their real hatred is coming out. As far as economics, it is a very, very, very powerful force in this country. And oh, yeah. it is. I mean, I mean that's in, in our country, country, for that matter. Free enterprise yeah. is what our country is really made on. So, I mean, you hit them in your pocketbook, bam. Now, Actually, I don't, want, you have I don't to be... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Or I, I don't want to, you know, stay on your line because you guys have, you know... No, you can stay on as long as you like to That's what it's a talk show. Oh, no, okay. It's all about people um, giving their opinions, you know, and we don't all have to agree, but far away. I just... Well, that's okay. I just I just wanted to tell you guys you're you're doing a great show, and I don't really know a lot about politics, but sometimes sometimes I catch a glimmer of something that I understand and what you're talking about. So thanks for speaking in my language. 
I look, you know, right. really good show today. I, I don't think I don't think you, it. Sometimes it's not even about knowing a lot about politics. It's about common sense. You know, mm-hmm. and know and knowing how you wish you would be treated in your own country that you pay taxes in. Yes, absolutely. Because because for and me, I said this. Sense. I want I want to get T-shirts printed. Give me give me equal rights, um, or or give me back my taxes. You can't charge everyone the same taxes. You can't make people pay pay taxes and then not give them the same rights. It's true. It, it's. It's it, it, it's another form of discrimination. It really is. See, I think often people don't have. I think a lot of us, and I'll include myself in this as well. A lot of us want to do things and talk a lot about it, but don't do anything about it. Which is, the caller is really talking about translating words into action that will actually do something. I mean, for example, everybody's upset about the spying, the spying, okay? Imagine if everybody stopped using the Internet for a day or stopped making phone calls for a day, you know? Right. But but nobody wants to generally – everybody wants to talk, and that's part of the problem with this country. Everybody wants to talk, but when it comes – go ahead. Well, until it it really hits home with you personally – you feel like it's really not your problem and, and not your battle to fight. And, and that, that, that is one of the fundamental flaws. Yes, exactly. Because everybody wants to, everybody wants their own little agenda. And for anything else, it's not their problem. There's an old poem about that. About yeah. you know, first they came from 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 the German gentleman. You know, first they came for this one oh. and that one and that. Yeah, exactly. But then they came for me, and and that's the thing. These issues me. affect everyone. You know, I mean, we, yeah. we could we could be silent on, you know, confiscate, not saying they are confiscating guns, but let's say they did decide tomorrow to confiscate guns, you know? Okay, so we don't support the Second Amendment because we say we believe in gun control. Okay, but then they have the guns and they come for free speech next, you know? Right, right. I I think the concern is that, uh, unfortunately, uh, most people, A, only want to complain and bitch about things that affect them, and B, um, they really only want to do it uh, when um, when they um, when they're really forced to, you know, I, I get a lot of shit because because I, I I say what I think and I campaign against stuff that I don't disagree with, not just gay issues but but all issues. You know, I used to say I was a gay rights campaigner, but I actually refer to myself as a human rights campaigner because it's not just gay rights that the the. the affect me. You know, I'm human too. And what and what people do to ethnic minorities and the disabled and blah blah blah, that all affects me too. It all has a knock on effect. Because like you said, you know, what what about when they come for you? What about when your group or you are the people are the ones that are being attacked? You know? I think people don't um fully um uh understand that concept. And, you know, it comes down to a basic, and I tend to babble, but it really does come down to a simple concept, live and let be. I think human rights, human rights can be summed up in that, and that's why I'm a libertarian, of course, live and let be. If it's not harming somebody else at all, then live and let be, whether it's, you know, a, a homosexual wanting to be married, whether it's a pagan witch wanting a monument, or whether it's a church practicing a service, whatever it is, or somebody wanting to smoke a joint. You know, it's like live and let be. Right. Fundamental right. freedom and human rights, the freedom of expression, the freedom to be, to think, to say, to express yourself, and to do what you wish if you're not harming another individual. That is what human rights comes down to. It's a simple concept. I just wonder, I I just wonder what that. we've lost because you know I, I know people that, that are older than me that was around in the that were around in the sixties and, and and talk about protests and, and and things like that. What what have we actually lost where we don't do that time? We don't revolt. You know there hasn't been a, a, a revolution in this country for for a hell of a long time. And, and oh, revolutions come on now, always. Xander, come on. come on. What about what about ACT UP and the AIDS movement? They, those yes, were like um, the people. Those were like the people who revolted and uh, and and got anything done in in the Reagan administration as far as AIDS funding. It wasn't the government that did that. It was your people no. revolting that did that. So yeah, we've had a revolution. It's just that since you guys were on the mainstream media, 
with the AIDS, whole AIDS thing anyway, because it really didn't, you know, wasn't on the media back then. Nobody knew about your revolution. So. Right. Yeah. And, and even this, even Occupy Wall Street, um, as far as I'm concerned, was revolution. But, but not, but it's, well, but it's not happened down the same global scale, you know, since the 60s, I think is, is what I mean. I, I, I wasn't meaning to decry um, any of those things. Um, I just think we all need to get out there. But, but I'm only for peaceful protest. They have to make that clear. I don't, I don't agree. See, to me, if you have to hurt people to get your message across, then it makes you just as bad as those that are, that are opposing you. That's so good. And, and you know, so you're I, absolutely I just, right. I, I feel the same way about that. I'm sorry. I you know, just blurted out in the middle of your conversation. I'm going to hang up to you guys. Or I'm going to say something else stupid. Thank you hey, for listening. Fine. Listen, thanks for calling, Sunday. Uh, thanks for your support. I love you lots, um, and I hope to sample your cooking um, very soon. Come on over. I've got plenty. I would love <laughs> to. Thanks, Sunday. Take care and have a great Thank Sunday. Thank you. Have, it's a great show. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Lots of love. Bye. That was the lovely Sunday. I um, I am always uh, having uh, mouth watering uh, outbursts when she puts pictures of her uh, food that she cooks from scratch um, on 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 Facebook. Um, okay, let's switch it up a, a little bit. Um, I wanna um, uh. I want to talk a little bit about um, Obama's visit to uh, Africa, which brings up a lot of of things. Apparently, hundreds of protesters marched on the U.S. Embassy in South Africa on Friday in a peaceful protest. There you go, peaceful protest against the impending visit by President Barack Obama. Uh, Opposed to U.S. policy on Cuba, the war in Afghanistan, global warming, and other issues. Um, um, there was also a rally. The rally in Pretoria was organized by trade unionists, um, members of the South African Communist Party. The, protest, the, the protesters wanted to raise public awareness and warn U.S. citizens about human rights violations committed by the Obama administration, which includes the non-closure of Guantanamo Bay Prison, holding terrorism suspects, said uh, a campaign coordinator whose name I cannot pronounce. I'm sorry. Um, Protesters carried signs that read, No, you can't, Obama, a message inspired by the Yes, We Can campaign slogan adopted by the president during his first run for election. Now, um, basically, um, you know, it it, it leads on a little bit from what we were talking about, doesn't it? You know, how, how, how is America viewed in the world? I think right now America, and there was a new article um, in the papers today that it's been revealed that America and Germany has launched a criminal investigation in the European Union into the United States of America, very significant as it is, into us spying on Germany and the European Union. And they're basically saying, if this is how you treat your friends and allies, how do you treat your enemies, you know? And we are not viewed well in the world right now, and I do believe that is directly the responsibility right now of the president of the United States. He has said many things and he has contradicted a lot of what he said. And I think, see, I didn't vote for him. I did not vote for him. I think that the people, his base should be infuriated. This is not the person. If I was a liberal Democrat, I'd be screaming, what what are you? You know, I'd feel betrayed, honestly, because a lot of what he stood for just about a, most of his statements, he has gone back on. I mean, even the gay rights issue, if you want to get back to that, that had to be forced on him by Joe Biden, by his vice president. He didn't even, he wasn't even ready. And then the gay community, like your caller wisely said, threatened the power of the purse, and then he spoke up. But he was, right. he was content to let it be until Joe Biden tipped the iceberg with that one. And he has with national security and everything else. You know, we're going to close Guantanamo Bay. We're going to stop the spying. And then he expands Yeah, we're going to bring the troops home, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, you know, I respect this, this Bush more. Um, I really, um, I really, 
I'm, I've been pro Obama. Um, I don't I don't like a lot of of what he's done of late. I don't like the lack of transparency. But do you know what I'm coming to see? Um, what I'm coming to see is uh, that that all of these all of these politicians are all exactly the same, and the only difference is uh, what color their party is, red or blue. You know that they, they all say we'll do this or we'll do that, um, and then you know he they they don't do it. Joe is saying in the chat chat room um, he. And, and I think the something he hasn't done, oh, the shit he hasn't done is because of the effing Republicans block him at every single juncture. I, I agree with that. I, I, I think that he would have been able to achieve a lot more if the Republicans hadn't blocked him um, at, at every point. And and honestly, and like you said, Xander, you know, people disagree all the time. I respectfully disagree, and it is because of the national security issue I disagree uh, the Republicans have blocked President Obama on a lot of things, many, many right. things. The list goes on and on, and I do agree with that. But there are some things you just cannot blame on the Republicans. This spying and the surveillance program is possibly the biggest example of that. He campaigned, and his, the speeches are out there in public on video, campaigning against these very programs. And then he goes right. into office, and he secretly expands the programs he campaigned against. You can't pin that one on a feisty Republican Congress. You, that's called yeah. lying. That's lying. Right. He, that is lying and deceit, in my opinion. You know, now hopefully the FBI won't come for me because I think the president is a liar. But when you make statements like that, and you make isn't, a promise isn't that scary publicly. that people are being uh, people are being arrested um, for, for for these for these things? That that scares me. What why 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 in freedom um, why in freedom of speech are there things that 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 are not so free? You see, I, I don't think it's wrong to I don't think it should be seen as wrong to criticize anything that any politician does because they're there by permission. They've been voted into office. So it, so it, is, it is up for our commentary. Uh, however, um, when, the thing that I do uh, really will not hold truck with is um, when, when people talk about his race, um, or say he should be killed, or say say things like that, because that really gets my go. You know, you know if, oh, if abso anybody absolutely if anybody does anything um, erroneous while they're in office, they, they should be fired. But I, I'm not I'm not kind of you know I'm not having any of this bullshit about you know uh, threats and, and malicious comments about politicians. I don't particularly like Sarah Palin, but I would by the same token. I wouldn't want to see people saying um, threatening things about her or her family because because they think she's a stupid woman, but I don't think that she deserves to be threatened. You know. Mm -hmm. um, Joe says she doesn't like people uh, listening in, but the Patriot Patriot Act started long before Obama's time. That that's true. It did, didn't it? Um, how long has the Patriot Act been? Um, in uh, operation, do you know? Um, that tragedy of human rights violation and of our Constitution, which I initially supported, by the way, like everybody else, a flag-waving member of the United States, get the bad guys initially, all for it, you know, was started shortly after 9-11, but as the government is so adept at doing, they took an authorization from Congress which was so broad, they basically declared anybody the president wanted an enemy, continual war. And they put those authorizations and programs in place right after 9-11, and then the government, the powers that be in the government agencies have expanded and expanded on a broad law. And the problem is you have seen all these secret programs come up where Congress is even saying, we, can't, we don't know what's in there. They won't brief us on these things. But the problem with it is Bush started these things. Obama, President Obama, candidate Obama campaigned against them and stated they were gross. They, he, he said we shouldn't have to sacrifice freedom 
for security. He said that as a candidate, and he was against these programs. And then we find out now through these leaks that they're doing more and they've expanded it more. And I just don't understand it. it. Once again, it goes back to my constitutional interpretation. The Fourth Amendment of the United States is black and white. Americans shall be secure in their persons from any unreasonable search and seizure, and a specific warrant right. shall be obtained. What's the point but you see, the NDA um, is um, uh, the, the NDA is indirect. Um, um, word escapes me. It, it's totally um, the opposite to that, isn't it? It's in, it's in contradiction to that. The NDA is in contradiction to what you just said. It's in complete any contradiction. Of us, any of us I, I, um, who is believed to uh, to be a terrorist suspect, they could they could just say someone they don't like. Oh, this person is a terrorist, um, and 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 frankly, uh, we think they need to be uh, incarcerated. Look at Bradley Manning. You know? Oh, exactly. In fact, there's some stories that are leaking out now, and, and they're in the alternative media, about instances like that, where somebody said that the government is listening in on the phone calls. They're not actually listening. That's where the government's playing games with words. No, they're not listening. They're, they're recording every conversation, storing it in a computer system, and if they ever need to pull it up, they can pull it up. And see, I've got nothing right. to hide, really. I've got nothing to hide. If they want to listen in or, or go back on a tape of my conversations, you know what? I'm on a public radio right now talking. I've got nothing yeah. to hide. What bothers me is the potential for that. What if they made an enemy list? They'd know everybody I ever contacted. Everybody, Nobody'd be safe. They'd know my family, my friends. They could sweep up. It's Hitler's wet dream. Sorry for the phraseology, oh, yeah. but I mean, he would have had it easier for the Holocaust. You know, if he had a giant computer that had everybody's contacts. On fire. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine how how that would have what that would have been like? Actually, the only thing I have to hide, Tony, is that I'm a lesbian. But you won't tell anybody, will you? <laughs> no, um, not at I all. I just said in the chat room. I think Obama is a bit too diplomatic at times, trying to get along so he can get things passed, et cetera, like et cetera, like the Dream Act. Um, and 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 I kind of tend to agree. I wish he. I wish Obama had been as tough as he is now from the beginning. And and I on um, although the uh you know the Republicans kind of blocked him on every single um uh, on every single point that he tried to uh, make change on um he he does have executive powers I mean because if I was the president and if it was something that was fair and 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 stuff look what he did with NDA that was an executive order wasn't it it wasn't something that was voted in. And, and, and that is my pro problem with President Obama. He acts as an executive with all his power and authority when he wants to. For instance, Edward Snowden, the leaker, whether you want to call him leaker or traitor, he's being charged under the Espionage Act of 1917. Obama is wow. using a document from World War one, I think, or World War II, I'm not sure which one, but that's how old the document is. It hasn't even been used to charge him with treason. And see, when he you see, wants to, he pulls to, For me, it goes back to this um, this ideology that it's okay for the government to keep secrets, even when it puts other nations' allies um, at, at risk. And and for me, it, it kind of it, it causes conflict for me. I can't remember what the guy's name was, but there was some guy who lived in Israel now, some Jewish guy, who worked for the government. Um, and he he shared he shared information with the the Israeli government, um, and they gave him uh, they gave him uh, what's it called uh, amnesty, and he went and lived there. But but the reason he did it not not because he wanted to be a traitor, but because Israel was our ally, and these these facts could have affected their safety. So it, it, I just find it all very it's all very hard to to kind of equate, you know. Um, I, I, I'm probably um, the most patriot, one of the most patriotic people that you could uh, ever talk to. But that doesn't mean I question things that I don't that I don't agree with, or that I don't question things that that I'm I'm not happy about. Because I think it's important to do so. But that does not make me unpatriotic, you know. And I think that that is the problem with society. It's it's scary. See, they've got the people of this country conditioned conditioned to where 
anybody that questions the government or what it's doing is wrong, and the accepted view is what it is, and nobody bothers to to question things anymore. Like, for instance, you heard me ask earlier, well, who's Snowden working for? How did he do, you know, no, nobody bothers to question things. There was a reporter who announced, Wait. this is in Cal- California, he announced to his friend and online, and he's the one that broke the story on General McChrystal, a big news story, he worked for Rolling Stone as far as it got McChrystal fired from Obama's administration. He broke that story, so this is a legitimate journalist. He says, Within a week or two ago, I've got a big story on the CIA. I'm afraid they're watching me if something happens to me. He sent out emails and everything. The man died last week in a car accident. Right after he I, sent I think that there's email. too many. There are too many. Um, you know, it's like it's like with 9/11. A lot of a lot of high-ranking officials and people that were around during 9/11. Um, mysteriously uh, died and disappeared. Uh, you heard it here. You heard it here first, guys. If if I if next week if I if if, <laughs> if I if you hear I've been killed in a car accident, you know why. <laughs> um, I think it comes from me. I mean, it's... we still have uh, Guantanamo. Me too, Joe. Um, you know uh, that 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 place should have should have gone a long time ago. You see, the thing is that yes, we need to keep our country safe. But but it's balancing that safety um, uh, with also um, ensuring people's freedoms and liberties um, are not affected. Because for me, this is this is this is my philosophy, and a lot of people don't agree with it. I think if you are against us, then 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 keep away, and 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 if you try and do things um, treasonous things, then you should be punished. You know. Um, like, for instance, the, the guy that was on an airplane, the Nigerian guy, with a bomb mm-hmm. in his underwear, they took him down on the tarmac. And I've said this before, and I've been criticized for it, but I really don't care. Um, I said they should have just put a bullet in his head. Because because this is the thing. If you're willing to die for that, for what you believe, to, to, to hurt my countrymen, then uh, then why do you deserve to live anyway? You know? And, and, and see, Xander, that's, that's, just, the problem, you know, that's the problem with today. I absolutely agree with you. What they're doing is they're, they're blurring the lines, and I do mean the people that make the news and the government manipulators of it, where somebody like me or you who disagrees with the government is thrown in with that lie. And we'll say, right. we'll broadcast to the world, I love my country, I love the people, I'm a loyal American. And it's not that I have a problem with it, it's this injustice the government's doing. But the minute we say that, we're labeled an enemy of the state, an un-American, an unpatriotic. Right. And these are not new tricks. That's the sad thing. Look at the history of the human race. This has been going on from empire to empire to country. They're pulling out the old bag of tricks to suppress freedom and dignity of people. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's change let's change direction a little bit. Um, I want to talk a little bit about something that tickled me this week. Uh, now you know the Jody Arias trial has been on uh, going. On. I'm sorry about the noise uh, in the background. It's not it's not my neighbor's dildo that's really loud. They're using a, a drill. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, now, Barry Gibb of PG fame is working on new music inspired by the trial of Jody Arias. The singer says he's writing a song about the case. Now, um, Arias was convicted in May of murdering her former boyfriend, Travis Alexander, a Mormon, in 2008, and faces the death penalty at the trial. Uh, which has apparently become a media circus. Um, she claims she killed him in self-defense. Um, and Barry Gibbs says what I'm writing about at the moment is a track about Jody Arias' trial. Um, what do you make of this? I mean, I know the Bee Gees did a song a few years ago. Um, I, I know the uh, the Bee Gees did a song a few years ago uh, called uh, about a guy that was going to the electric chair. You know the song, um, uh, I Just Gotta Get a Message to You. Um, but but this but this kind of feels, I don't know, I can't, I can't work it out. What do you think? Honestly, I'm not too familiar with the trial very much. I think that a lot of writers and musicians in general tend to write songs where they're passionate of, um, just like I'm passionate on the NSA thing, for instance. You know, I, if I was a artist, I'd be recording a song about it. So they pick issues 
that they're very passionate about. Um, I think the death penalty is a very significant issue, and it's going to become one, I predict, in the future in this country, big time, as they're doing DNA sweeps of people now who are arrested, as they're doing a lot of things and biometric databases and everything. It's like, do we really want the death penalty on the table anymore? As far as the specifics of the case go, honestly, Xander, I really don't know too much about it. Um, I, I I don't um, either, and I think like most people, I've just kind of seen bits and bits and bobs from the TV. Uh, but I, I just kind of um, for me, you know, the, the Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees right, writing a song about this. It's like part two of, of I've Got to Get a Message to You, um, the song they wrote uh, like uh, 30 years ago, or however long ago it was. So, um, have you heard the controversy uh, that uh, Ann Coulter is pissed at, at uh, Chris Christie? Um, no, why is she pissed at Chris Christie? This should be interesting. That was one news item I did not come across. Well, she lost. Uh, she said she lost her enthusiasm for New Jersey Governor Chris Christie after the senator had appointed to temporarily fill the late Frank Lautenberg seat, voted to end the debate on the immigration bill. And she tweeted uh, to, uh, what was it, she said something like, uh, she once championed him as the party's only hope to capture the White House in 2012. Um, she then sent out several tweets suggesting that a vote to allow amnesty for immigrants was also a vote for abortion, gay marriage, Obamacare, and big government. Now, I'm not a big fan of um, this woman. You know, she really, um, I'm sorry, I hope this noise in the background is not bothering you no. too much. Just one second. Um, I really, uh, I really am not a big fan of Ann Coulter per se, um, and there's not much that I agree with her on. I think she's a horrible human being. However, my feelings for Chris Christie have changed um, over the last year. He's had a more bipartisan approach um, and has been a little bit more pro-Obama. Um, but then when Obama came out with this immigration bill, he kind of like, you know, he started to get a little bit pissy again. You know, what, what, what's it all about? What do you think about this situation? Well, I, I share your views with, about Ann Coulter, first of all. The only thing I respect about Ann Coulter is that she clearly states her views and she defends them very strongly and that I respect in anyone. Um, but I, I share your opinion of her. Um, as far as Chris Christie goes, you know, um, what can I say? I didn't... I. I'm not from New Jersey, obviously. I'm down here in the state of Florida, but from what I follow in the news, I never liked him to begin with. I think he goes with the political the political winds of the time. For instance, I came across right. an article last week where he was speaking to the conservative base, like at a very conservative group, and a woman tried to thank him for his support of Obama with the with the storm, Hurricane Sandy and everything. Right. And he I shut agree. her up basically. He shut her up wow. and he said, I'm no fan of I'm no. This was a statement because you're speaking to a conservative group. I'm no fan of Obama, and I didn't vote for him, and I don't think he should be president. Well, that's funny because well. that's not what you were showing in public for the past month or two. You see, I, I'm all for people changing their mind because for me, it's all about evolution. It's all about growth and changing, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to make it clear why you've changed your decision on something. Not just say, you know, one week I don't like strawberries, and then the next week say, oh, I really love strawberries. Do you know what I mean? And, and absolutely, and I respect change. Me too. I, I, I mean, I've changed my opinion, as you know, on certain things, but when I do, I come back usually and I say, hey, I was wrong. This is why I've changed my opinion, and I own absolutely. up to it. You you own it, and that's the difference. T tell us about the um, – oh, just before we move on to that, I want you to tell us about the the, the, um, the article you shared on uh, Facebook. But uh, Joe was just saying in the chat room, before he got his uh, – um, something about before he got his surgery, I think it's clear he's planning, planning to run uh, in 2016 and has to start hating on Obama. I tend to agree, Joe. Um, so tell us about the, the story you shared on um, Facebook that you thought was uh, caused some controversy. 
Well, and I think a lot of people just ignored it because it was uncomfortable. And my basic thing was I began with the heated issue of Paula Deen, which really right. up, up my ante because if – the thinking behind Paula Dean is correct, then President Bush should have never been elected president. Not politically, not that I know a lot of people don't like him politically, but, you know, he, he was a confessed cocaine addict, for instance, you know, right. at a time in his life. But that didn't stop him from being president. So people are going back with Paula Dean now, taking statements she made 30 years ago in the N-word, okay, and, and they're holding it against her. And the thing is... I hear this a lot of the time because of my job and my field from people in the streets and everything. You, you hear these young black Americans or young people using terms like white cracker bitch, this and that, or racial slurs of hatred towards white people. And whenever they right. do, people pat them on the back and say, oh, it's just the way they were raised. It's just their culture. But now you're condemning Paula Dean for something she said when the South was still segregated. Right. which was her culture then. And, and it's a double standard. And what I was railing against was the double standards of society, whether it's that immigration right. reform is another example. You know, the conservatives love to invoke the name of Ronald Reagan. Uh, that's their favorite. Like when all else fails, I swear, a conservative Republican, they can be losing the argument, and then they say, but Ronald Reagan said, and that's the end of the debate, you know. But Reagan talked about freedom and democracy in America being a land of opportunity. But we don't hear about that in the immigration debate. We hear about securing our borders, secure our borders. But we're not building fences along the Canadian border, are we? We're not building walls there. I know all no. the Canadians that are in this country. So what are they really saying with immigration reform? Is it not possibly, let's keep the dark-skinned or the Mexican people out? We don't want I think them. That that's a big, I think that's a big part of it. I have to agree with you. Let's go backwards just a little bit to, to Paula Dean, because um, George just commented in the chat room, and I, I really want to make some things clear about this. Um, she said uh, she thinks Paula's punishment is way past her crime, and, and I have to agree. Now, last week I tweeted I tweeted a joke on on Twitter when all this first came out. I said, um, "Buy Paula Dean's new cookbook, uh, Cooking for <laughs> Racists of the South." All all proceeds go to the National Negro College Fund, and I thought that was hilarious. And there was this huge shitstorm that ensued that I'm not going to kind of go into, but part of the message of this was that everyone um, is a little racist. And my point was, well, isn't that um, isn't that just an excuse? Um, and and I had an argument about whether using the N-word made you racist. And most people said, you know, hell no, everybody uses it and it's acceptable and, and blah, blah, blah. Now, for me, I, I don't like the N-word. I don't like using the N-word and I don't like any any form of discrimination and do try and stay away from it. Um, however, it was pointed out that sometimes um, our language, our terminology, the things we say and the things we use, can be a little racist even if even if we're not and and I see that point too now let me make this clear um I am not against Paula Dean I don't think she should have lost her job for me the two things are two separate things she never went on the food network and used the n word or sent, said anything racially uh racially explicit um exactly. so I don't think she lost her job lose lost her job and I and I think that um Looking into this matter, um, the person that actually took out the lawsuit against her uh, what was was all about making money and, and, and destroying her, and, and and it was kind of it was kind of a blackmail situation, um, if you like. Um, you know, Georgia said in the chat room, and I really concur with this. She said, "I bend over backwards to be PC. I would never make racial jokes, but come on, you know." I don't think there's a bad bone in Paula Dean's body, and 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 this is the thing, it, you know, it's like I'll give you an example. There was there was a thing on Twitter a few weeks ago, um, and and a, and a comedian was saying it was okay to make race rape jokes. So so where where do we draw the line on what we say and what we joke about? I I just think this is the thing. This is the thing, and I stand by this. And I'll give you a chance to speak right after Tony. 
this is what works for me and this is what I believe. And you don't have to agree with that. But don't give me, sh I'm not saying this to you, I'm saying this generally. But don't give me a shitload of bullshit um, for what I believe and, and what I think. Because it's my choice to believe um, what uh, I, uh, what I uh, believe. So there you go, I've said my piece. Fire away, Tony. <laughs> I think the big issue with Paula Dean, and it, it really is reprehensible. It's a reverse discrimination and a reverse racism. I mean, I, when people want to cast stones at her, now, once again, you raised an excellent point. If she had said something recently or on the Food Network or whatever, I'd be saying she should be fired too and she's racist and everything right. else. I would agree. I would agree with that right. because that's intolerable in our society today. But people are right. going back to something this woman said 30 years ago or 40 years right. ago even and, and holding it against her. And there's two considerations there. The first is there were segregated bathrooms back then. That was Southern culture. Okay, so if she well, made not, those not comments. 30, wait, wait, wait. Not 30 years ago there wasn't. Not 30 years ago, but they're saying now that it could have even been far back. She didn't specify the time, which I think was problematic for her. <laughs> One right. One of the things she specified was what what in the, was in the eighties that she had a gun put to her head when she worked in a bank um, by by someone was was black, um, and that was when she said she should use the N word. And, and 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 frankly, whilst whilst I mean I get it, you know, you're not going to say, oh, you know, this this nice young gentleman, this nice young ethnic gentleman put a gun to my head. You know, she she said back then what she felt what she felt and I get that you know and, and and once again you know that goes on to the second aspect of it okay so if the comments weren't made in the you know when she was growing up when the south would have been segregated then if she made those comments 30 years ago that was 30 years ago and if you want to be fair about this let's go back look at every celebrity on TV find yeah. out what they did 30 years ago Let's find out right. what everybody's done 30 years ago, and if it was something wrong, let's fire them and ban them from making a living. I know I wouldn't survive. I don't know about you. You know, 30 – it's a standard you can't oh, no. possibly that, apply. I, I gave, last week on the show, I gave an example of, 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 of what kind of turned my terminology around when and, – and cut a long story short, I was going to visit a friend – and and some some black guy stopped me on this this housing estate in London, um, just next to my friend's house, and were calling me a baddie man and all of these anti-gay things. And I said, well, if I'm a baddie man, then you're the N-word. And my friend who I was went to visiting, who was a black guy, said, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have used that word to him. And I was like, well, if I'm a baddie man, then he's an N-word. He went, no, 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 you can't you can't look at that. What about all the people around that would hear you? saying the n-word um and, and would be offended by that did, did all of them call you uh, uh discriminatory uh use gay discriminatory gay terminology with you and i said no he said well there you go then he said no no one should be using the n-word it's got such derogatory um connotations uh to it and 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 frankly, you know, I hate the word and 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 that's fine. That and and that taught me something. But you know, I just, you know. Well, I, I well, just, the thing uh, is, too, it's a double stand. It's a double. It really is a double standard, and that's what my Facebook post railed against was all these I double st standards. I mean, I'm sorry, but I I know of at least three instances locally here where people right. We're called by African Americans. Is that the politically correct term now, or is it back to being black? Because you know I can't call I have the trend no very idea. well. You know, we, we, which is it? I want to be correct. You know, God forbid somebody gets offended. Whether it's black, African American, I've seen these younger or non people. White. <laughs> non white. Non white. I've seen these younger non white people throw words like white ass cracker bitch and fuck you honky all mess you up up and and it's totally excused and permitted but if a white youth right. or a white person calls them the n word back they're racist well wait no 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 the, they're equal i mean the right. n word is deplorable but so is white cracker bitch so is honky so is faggot hate speech in general is wrong and you have to apply Absolutely. that standard equally 
Absolutely. Joe just said in the chat room, have you ever listened to Whoopi Goldberg's philosophy on the N-word, um, which is basically an empower phrasing. She says she's not an N-word. She doesn't know any N-words, and she's never known any N-words. And, <laughs> and, and I, think, I think that kind of says, says it all, really. It's, it's, you see, just for me, I, I think it's about where it comes from. That there's a bar I go to in, in, in Harlem, and um, it's, a, it's a place where, uh, where they do karaoke. Uh, and every time I go in there, it's a majority, majority, um, the majority of the clientele are, are non-white, um, but you know, they're, 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 it's a, it's kind of a black bar basically, and they serve food. And, and I'm I'm known quite well there. And when I go in, um, they always say, "Hey, N word," or "Hey, nig," or "Hey this," or "Hey that." They use that terminology in there, and I and I used to think, "Why do they do this?" And apparently, it's called taking it back, and 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 and, and taking back the power. Now, I've kind of never understood that. I understood that between two black people, but for a white person calling a black person um, the N-word. I don't know. It all gets confusing. But for me, where it all goes back to is, is what you actually mean. So if I meet you and I say, uh, like, I, I have a friend in London who used to say, now then, you silly fat fag. And, right. and some people would see that as offensive. But that was a term of endearment for him. So for me, it's all about where it is coming from, you know. And, and it, see that, just, that that is the truth. It, for me, it's about what what what's in what's in your heart. But but for the record, before we move on from this, I I don't think Paul Dean should have been fired. Um, and and my and my this is the re the reason why I joke about lots of things because it's important to get people talking about issues because that's how we affect change. And if at the end of the day I've got to stop joking on Twitter, then I may as well not even be there. You know. No. Now, one thing I would to like to say really quick, if you don't mind, Xander, before we move on, on. about this, is Absolutely. I, could be proven, I could be proven wrong in the future, because like the Chick-fil-A thing, you know, if news were to leak that she was using this word on a regular basis in private quarters or whatever, I'd have a totally different opinion. But from what right. we know now in public, she has not, and it's a 30-year-old mistake. Now, if that changes, no, I don't support her. Then, okay, everything was done justly. All this stuff was, and, and this this woman, let's face it, this woman who took out the complaint against her had a grievance, um, yeah. and she said, um, and, and and she said all of these things um, because you know she she she's got a grievance with with Paula Dean. No one in their right mind at the public eye, if they have a business, is going to go around their business saying to people, "You're a fag, you're the N word, you're this, you're that, you're the other," because they know they're going to get into trouble for it. We have to be politically correct nowadays. Um, but you know, it's, um, it, it's the way that as Joe just pointed out, you know, um, the, the woman's grievance was with her brother and Paula was just a partner in the business. Um, and she says, Paula Dean has enough money to live on forever. Um, but she's incredibly hurt and ashamed and, and, um, and my, my heart goes out to her, you know, and, and I think that, um, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous that, that she's lost all these, um, promotional, uh, gigs um, because of it. Joe wants to know if you're on Twitter, Tony. No, he's not, Joe, but I've been trying to persuade him to get his ass on there. Um, not yet. I will eventually join Twitter, you know, if the NSA don't block me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to another subject. Uh, we're still all right for time. We're still taking calls, by the way. If you have a question for me or Tony or a comment or want to chime in on any of the subjects, you can call us on 34. Seven eight eight four nine zero six one. That's three four seven eight eight four nine zero six one. Call us now and tell us what you think. Okay. Whew. Wow. So, um, something I found really interesting that I found um, as a news item this week was um, the um, that the Boston bomber um, Sarniev or whatever the hell he's called. Mm -hmm. downloaded the bomb-making instructions from an Al-Qaeda magazine online um, on an Islamic jihad and martyrdom website and later scrawled anti-American messages inside the boat where he lay wounded, a federal indictment charge last week. 
what the hell is going on that you can go onto the internet and find the the instructions to make a bomb? I, you see, I I don't think I don't think that that we should be um, I don't think that we should be told what we can and can't say and do on the internet. But surely, surely that in itself should not be allowed. You know, there are some things that that should not be on there. Mhm. I I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about that. Quite honestly, Xander, because you go down a slippery slope when you start to censor. Uh, things in general and the internet and once again that's almost relates back to the gun control thing directly you know it's like okay this is harmful should we have it out there as a libertarian do no harm if it's going to harm somebody else then then you should yeah, not have it should, and it should be illegal but that should be the crossover point shouldn't it it's it's kind of like freedom of speech um but when it turns into hate speech or when when things turn into something that's going to harm someone for me that should be everything everything over and everything under that mark should be accept, acceptable, but anything that 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 could potentially hurt someone, surely, then then then, then that should not be on there. And you know, there even guy, there even is true. There are even websites to tell you how to kill yourself quickly and uh, suicide help uh, websites and things like that. I mean, it, it's all kind of concerning. You know, there are there are, in this world there are a lot of mixed up people and mixed up kids, and if they see shit like this. You know, uh, you know, it's it's scary. Georgia said uh, there about the there are websites of how to make poisons. You know, basically murder um, instructions. Um, I, I I just I find this wholly um, amazing that you could go onto the internet now and find a um, a, a recipe like instructions to make a bomb. You know. It, 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 it's scary, and 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 it means that that other people will have access to this equipment. It is scary, Xander. But the thing to keep in mind, I think, with this, is look at what we told the government they could do after nine eleven: protect us right. in our security. Boy, they went with that. But if you start telling the government, oh well, this shouldn't be online. And that shouldn't be online. It's dangerous, and it is dangerous, and there's no legitimate reason for somebody to post it, and it does do harm. But when you start to say to the government, this shouldn't be online, that shouldn't be online, you are opening up literally, I believe, the floodgates of hell based on our recent events in this country. They will take that, and they will run with it, and they will manipulate it, and they will use it to impose all sorts of circumstance. Do you really oh, trust the government to decide that? It's happening. That? Yes, and, and see, when we say it shouldn't be on there and it shouldn't be allowed on there, the thing is, then who polices that? Do we trust our government to police that? I, I think it. I think an independent body should police what's allowed on the internet. Georgia said there are even um, instructions on how to make an, an atom bomb. I, I just think it's scary. There are so many nutbags out there um, that 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 get these ideas ideas into their head. I mean, you can't tell me. You can't tell me that those two kids that did this Boston bombing didn't didn't have serious issues. I mean, what, what does it actually take um, for people to actually be uh, to be willing to do that kind of shit? It's not your average man in the street, is it? You know, I mean, they say that these that these recruiters, you know, that recruit uh, people for these kind of things um, are actually looking. They know who to look for. You know that there's a profile. There's like a psychological profile of who these people, um, who these people recruit. And and I think it's kind of sad. You know, um, I remember when when um, the, the, when there were bombings in England and stuff. And um, you know, uh, the perpetrators, you know, had had been, you know, uh, used the full facilities of the United Kingdom, the benefit system. Um, and an and education, free education, and, and, and all of these things, and then they go and do that shit. I mean, it, it, it's scary, you know? Joe says, what about the white guy who blew up the Oklahoma City building, killed hundreds of people? Um, you know, it's... I, I don't think it's necessarily uh, about race. I think it's uh, I think it's more to do with mentality, really. 
you would have to have a specific mentality to be able to go out there and blow people up or shoot people and kill people. I mean, your average man in the street surely isn't capable of that. Hello? Tony? Are you there? Um, I think we might have lost. Ah, you. We lost you for a minute. It, a block okay. talk software is uh is is, <laughs> is so uh is so shit. Um, I um uh, I like a lot of radio people. Are uh, I'm actually going to get my own software, and I'm actually going to start transmitting from my own website and from my computer. Um, in the future, I'm just getting all that together now. Because uh, then you don't get all this lost calls, drop calls, bad bad quality, um, bad, bad quality uh, audio and stuff. Well, you know, Joe um, did okay. bring up an excellent. Go ahead. Go on. No, go on. No, no, go ahead. It was important. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you, you started saying Joe brought up an excellent point, which well, was as far as the Oklahoma City bombing that being a white person or whatever. And I'm very careful when I bring race into things. This is just speculation, but once again, you have to look beyond the news. That's all I'm saying. We had after 9-11, the Islamic people were the bad guys. They were the enemy. They were the enemy. Right. Islam, the radical Islams, right? But those were Mideastern descent. You could tell them apart. The Boston bombing, what's very interesting about that is it created national panic. That was somebody that looked like an average white person. So now the terrorist can be you, Xander. It can be me. It can be our neighbor. It can be everyone. What that Boston bombing did in the minds of the people and the consciousness of this country, think about it. Now the terrorist isn't just the guy from the Middle East and the stereotypical. It could be you, me, or anyone. And that's scary. And you have to think about the implications of who might have wanted that. Just right. saying. I I I see exactly what you're saying. You see, the difference between me and and most people is that the way that I get my message across as a as an educated intellectual person is I use I use the skills that I have. I use my voice. I use the computer, and and I I do it that way. And and it goes back to what I said. If you if you've got to. Uh, uh, if you've got to uh, resort to violence to get your message across, then for me, your your whole point is lost um, in 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 your in what you're trying to achieve. It really is. Joe said, not like Terry Watts' his name. Who is Terry Watts' his name? Those guys looked looked Middle Eastern, I think. Not like Terry Watts' his name. Um, I, I, do you mean the person that was responsible for the Oklahoma City bombing? Joe? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, the mean. person. Yes. Right. To right. Terry Nicholas. Yeah. Yes, and, and at the time, see, okay, everybody kind of weren't on a terrorism frenzy back then, as I would say, you know, so it was right. covered over. But for many years now, the enemy has been the guy of Mideastern descent. And now with this yeah. Boston see, bombing, that's changed. To the enemy can look just like you and me, and that's what right. uh, an evil guy, uh, I'm not saying the government is evil. But between the spying, between everything else that's going on and the people, there are programs right here in Florida where the sheriffs are saying, report suspicious activity. Not my local one, but one in another county. And we'll send somebody out to the door to check up on it. So now we have this big brother watch mentality that's coming into this country, and it's very, very suspicious. These are the sorts of things that totalitarian regimes start with. Watch your neighbor, report it, be a good citizen. What does a terrorist what does a terrorist look like, you know? I'm, I I think that I think you're absolutely right. Um we we do all need to be vigilant and if you see things that are suspicious you should you should say something. You know, um abandoned cars, uh uh luggage luggage left in in consp- in, in conspicuous places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is the thing I think that it's better to be wrong um than 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 for something catastrophic to happen i i I really really do and um, you know what i I okay. agree with that go on I, I agree with that the The problem is in where they're defining the suspicion level you know if somebody overheard blog talk radio for instance today, right, 
Or are they going to have it where, oh, that guy Tony was talking against the government. I better report him to the FBI, and then I go on a watch list. That's what I'm afraid yeah. of occurring in society today, where people like I'm me sorry. or you. Right. I'm sorry to tell you, Tony, but you and I are probably on several (laughs) watch lists already. I just hope they're not watching me when I'm taking a shower or scratching my ass, that's all. (laughs) (laughs) I really do. Um, You know, like I said, the only thing that I have to hide is the fact that I'm a lesbian. But, you know, there are only 12 (laughs) people listening to this show, so it doesn't matter. Um, Okay, right. Um, Let's move on to another topic. Um, before we come to a close, um, I want to just uh, talk um, a little bit about. Oh, and then I've got a game for you to play. Very exciting. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So <clears throat> apparently, um, the majority of Americans, a majority of Americans, say President Obama's uh, health care overhaul will make things worse for them and their families. And the National, uh, and the national Overhaul, a poll re- released um, last week, found highlighting the challenges uh, his administration still faces in winning over the public. Uh, overall, the survey of nearly 2,050 adults showed that 52% disapprove of the 2010 law, aiming at expanding access to health insurance for millions of people. According to Gallup, another 44% said they back the changes. Now, this is the thing um, about um, Obamacare for me. Um, I don't I don't think that – two things. I don't think Obamacare um, is set in stone. I think it, it's a work in progress, and, and it's not going to be perfect, and it's going to need to be tweaked. But what I have to take my hat off to is this is the first time any president that has promised health care reform has actually tried to do something about it. Now, I I don't think – that um, this is the thing for me when there is opposition to things like the Republicans don't like Obamacare so tell us what you think would be better and we can work it into the pro- the process into the program but they don't have anything better to offer and they just kind of want to bitch but for me surely Tony even even you must take your head off to him even though it's not a perfect program he's the first one to have even attempted to do anything with health care reform well actually and it goes back to I think Joe was talking about uh, uh, was one of our callers anyway talking about the Republicans blocking Hillary Clinton right. did try this very same thing and she was she did. completely blocked by the Republican Congress so I give her credit for attempting that as well. And I'm not a fan of Hillary Clinton, right. but like you just said, credit where credit is due. She tried her damnedest, and she she was blocked. And I think it does come back to what you said. Ultimately, I 100% agree. If this isn't the right program, and I believe it's against my rights personally, you know, to force me to have health insurance as a libertarian. But if this isn't what we should have, don't just say this isn't what we should have. What is your give us an alternative. better idea? Give us a give us an alternative. You know. You see, I I think that I think the thing is that um, there are so many people in this country that can't afford health insurance. There has to be um, better alternatives. And and the and the other and the things that are in um, I can't think of them what they're called. The things that are in operation right now they're not working. They're programs that 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 are. are a roll-ons from other administrations, you know, and, and they're not um, they're not kind of working uh, either. You know, in in the UK, for instance, uh, they pay less taxes than than we do. Plus, they have uh, socialized medicine. Um, I know they're gearing more towards like you pay what you can afford to pay, but I think that's kind of how it should be here too. You know, you shouldn't. You know, you sh- if you if you are on a low income, you shouldn't be paying exactly the same as someone that earns two million a year. You know, uh, for for me, it, it it's a kind of a ridiculous, um, it's a ridiculous uh, ideology. No one should be without health care. I think everyone has a right to two things, and that's um, health care and education. And and if you can't, you know, you should get those 
those two things, and those things should be a guaranteed right to you, health care and education. But, you know, that's just me. Well, and once again, I try to use common sense with things. My problem with the health care law is it covers people that don't want to be covered. I am very adamant on my own right to privacy. Okay? Right. Meaning, meaning if I don't want to pay an insurance company because I don't get sick, and they, the analysis of Obamacare said just this, that it's the generation my age group, 20s, 30s, 40s, that's paying for the bulk of this thing because we don't get right. sick often so we don't see the doctor and we're paying into the system. I don't want to have to be forced to pay for health insurance if I don't want it because it only affects me. So, now, there's a balance to that, though. There is a balance, which people argue, well, when you go to the hospital, when you go to the hospital, you're mooching off of everybody else who is paying into the system. Well, the thing is, then if I go to the hospital and I don't have health insurance, let me sign a waiver. You know, if I'm refusing right. health insurance, then let me sign a waiver saying, hey, if I die, it's on me. You don't need to treat me. Right. I think that's Georgia fair. Joe said they should not give Medicare for free. Uh, do you mean that for everyone, Joe, or do you think that um, everybody should pay something? Um, there's a bit of a delay um, between the show and the chat room. There's like a, a, a 30 second delay or something. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out while I'm waiting for a response from Joe is um, part of the problem is as well, we as a country have let the the drug companies hold us to ransom for too long. I'm, I'm, we're, we're so uh, we're so close now with with the drug companies that they've got this knife by our throat, and the the blade is digging in and nearly just like you know producing blood. Um, I think that um, I, I think that 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 the, the problem is that it goes back to capitalism again. It, it's more about money, and we should be focusing on the consumer. Um, we should ensure that they uh, get exactly what they need, um, and, and not focus on the financial implications. Um, Joe said, "Well, actually, I said both. Read the last part. So let me read it again." Actually, we should get the same insurance that Congress gets. I think that that's what Barack Obama was trying to do, to, to buy in bulk for the whole country so that there would be a diff discount. If you can afford to fly your horse from England to America to play in a game, we should not give you Medicare for free. No, definitely not. I, I think it should be means-tested. I definitely do. And it should be a sliding scale, and you should, should have to pay according to uh, what you can afford. Um, and, and, and surely that's the fairest way. That's the most sensible way. Hello? Yes. I, I actually agree with you. I just really have a problem with the government mandating, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, mandating health insurance for anybody who does not want it. And I think that that is outright wrong. It is my body, your body, and the decisions we make in regards to our own body that are not affecting another human being are our own decisions. And when you start to give the government control of somebody's own free will decisions over what they do with their body, that's a problem to me. And to force me to get health insurance, I believe is against my rights. And I believe it's against fundamental human rights. I mean, what can they force next? I mean, not to eat vegetables, you know, or me to not eat meat or, Things like that, or organic I, foods I, on the I block. Do, I do see that point. Uh, Joe wants me to ask you, tell you this. Ron Paul said, Tony, if you had no insurance, Tony, and not enough money, and you got hit by a truck, you should be left to die, uh, left in the street. To uh, you should should be left to die in the street, basically. Um, but yes, when he, but yet, yes, when he wanted single payer, uh, when we could all have Medicare. What do you think about what Ron Paul said? This is Joe asking you this. Well, I think I think Ron Paul and me completely agree on the issue. That's exactly what I was saying. If I get hit by a truck and I don't want health insurance, then nobody should have to treat me and the taxpayer shouldn't pay because I made that decision of my own free will and right. And then a hospital should not have to treat me and the government should not have to fund me. Tough luck, I get hit by a car, I'm dead. I knew that when I didn't get the insurance. 
That I but agree with one hundred percent. But surely there's there's a ridiculous element to that because principles are not going to keep you alive, are they? Well, well, that's the thing. It's not a matter of principle. It's a matter of it, it's a matter of legality. I mean, for instance, with my home, okay. If I don't have homeowner's insurance, right, and a hurricane comes and wipes my home or a fire, I'm homeless. But I made that decision of my own free will from my private property knowing that. Now, hopefully, if I didn't get homeowner's insurance and I was that stupid and a hurricane or a fire destroyed my home, hopefully then there'd be neighbors kind enough to help me out of charity or private groups that would help me out of charity. But I shouldn't collect a dime then from the government because... I should have got the insurance to begin with. I think the very same principle applies with health care. And one of the unspoken things about the government and the hospitals is a lot of what they say the government pays for with the hospital when an uninsured goes there, they're including in that. They're including right. in those statistics what the, the veterans that the government pays for and the people on Medicaid. So when they say the government's subsidizing the hospitals, the government's subsidizing who it already subsidizes. So it's a false right. argument. So They're not giving important. you the real math. What, um, so wouldn't you use FEMA if there was a hurricane or, or something? And, 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 here, and here's the thing. Once again, if I, it goes back to what you said, Xander. If I'm dying in the street and the government wants to take me to a hospital with taxpayer money, am I going to fight? No, that's my life. You know, beautiful principle, but am I going to fight? If my house gets wiped away and the government and the government wants to help me and I didn't have insurance, I would welcome the help. I'd take whatever help I could get. But the government should decide, no, you decline the help. It's just like with my clients at work, you know, you have people that sign waivers. Okay, so a waiver system might be, might need, you know, I'd love to be able to send the IRS a form, a certified form, you know, with my whole signature, with a notarized thing saying, I decline my right to hospitalization if I do not, Purchase this health insurance, but don't charge so, but me thirty bucks a month for it. That, that was Joe's question. If there was a would hurricane, use, if a hurricane forbid, came tomorrow, um, wouldn't you use FEMA? Um, would I use FEMA if a hurricane came tomorrow? I don't know because that's what private insurance is for, basically. You know, I'm not that. What if you didn't have private insurance? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Basically, would I, would I would I take the help given to me? Absol absolutely, absolutely. Do right. I believe the government should? Do I? Now, there's a difference, though. See, that's almost a little bit of a tricky thing. Would I take the help? Yes, I'm a selfish human being like anybody else. Principles aside, I need to survive. Of course, I would take the help. Should the government be providing that help to somebody in that situation? No. Right. That's how I feel about it. Would I take the help? Sure, if it was me, absolutely. But do I feel the government should be providing that help? No. Right. Well, uh, just before we go on to the game, I just want to share with you what Joe said because then I, I guess you're not you're not in chat. Um, but Joe said, uh, well, just like I don't want the state killing anyone in my name, I don't want the government letting him lay and die in the street either. So I paraphrased a little there, but but I I really kind of have to agree. Okay, well, I'm going to bring it to a close now, Tony, but what I want to do before we go is to play this new game. We played it last week, and it was really funny. Okay. And it's called Celebrity Word Association. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some names to you, and I want you to be honest and say the very first word that comes into your head. Have you oh, seen this goodness. Game? <laughs> okay. So, so basically, I will say a name, and um, wham, tell me the first thing that comes into your head. All right, so let's start. Kelly Osborne. Donny Osborne. Rand Paul. <laughs> Libertarian. Barack Obama. Yes, we can. Paula Dean. <laughs> Cook. Bill Clinton. Hillary. Leo DiCap. Come on, you're 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 not being uh, you're 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 being too nice. Leo DiCaprio. Oh, I can't think of the movie I always associate with him. It's not a word. I always think of that movie. 
Uh, can't Titanic. Think. It's a uh, the Four Points movie about the gang. Gangs in New York. I always think right. of that. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Kardashian, as in Star Trek, but Kardashian. <laughs> No, but it's funny. It's funny you should say say that. A lot of people think uh, it's it, it's a similar thing. All right, James Gandolfini. James Gandolfini. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Uh, he died last week, and he was in um, that that mob series. No, but Gandalf, I would associate wizard. <laughs> it's the only thing I could say with that. Okay, Lady Gaga. Music. Marilyn Monroe. Vogue. Amanda Bynes. Don't know who she is either. You don't know who Amanda Bynes is? You seriously need to get on Twitter, Tony. Uh, (laughs) Sarah Palin. Ditch. Sorry. (laughs) Daryl Stevens. Daryl Stevens. Nothing. You don't know who Daryl Stevens is? Nope. Wow. You, are you sure you're gay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, next one. Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Loud mouth. Sissy Spacek. Sissy Spacek. Yeah. Nothing. Xander Gill. I'm shocked. <laughs> Xandermonium. Uh, Tina Turner. Tina Turner. <laughs> Rock music. Okay. Paris Hilton. Hotel. Kelly Ripper. Who? Kelly Ripper. You know, you're not very up on, on culture, are you? All right, moving oh. on. Bono. Sonny. Um, Donald Trump. <laughs> Millionaire. Jody Arias. Guilty. No, kidding. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Well, well. Okay, well that was that was the last of of our names. I think you're too reserved when you when it comes to your responses. You think you thought too much about it. You're supposed to say the very first first thing that comes into your head, whatever that might be. But but never mind. We will try that again next time you come on. Um, Xander, that wouldn't be appropriate for the airwaves. <laughs> hey, it would. That's what it's all about. You should you should hear the answers that that Brody gave us last week um, on the show. Uh, they were, they, they weren't, um, I don't think he, uh, I, I don't think he was holding back at all. Uh, Joe says <laughs> you don't watch TV much, do you? <laughs> I no, guess I mean, they read Joe. the news on the internet, basically. <laughs> right. Well, listen, Tony, thank you so much, um, for being our guest today and, uh, for your commentary and opinions. Uh, I hope you'll come back and, uh, join us again very soon. Well, thank you for having me, Xander. It was definitely an interesting conversation. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Uh, I'm giving my love to Kiko, and we will see you again very soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Well, that was another episode of Xandermonium. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you to all those in chat. Thanks to Joe. Thanks to all the guests. Um Thanks to those that came that I had to kick out for being naughty little boys. Uh, We will be back with you next week. Um, I will be telling you about some very exciting guests that that are coming along for the month of July. It's all very, very exciting. Um, I'd like to thank you for your continued support. Um, I hope to see you uh, back on Twitter very, very soon when the Twitter Nazis lift my um, suspension. Um, I can I can actually see, by the way, everything everybody is saying 
Um, so I am keeping notes um, for for who needs to be blocked when I come back. I'm just joking. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Joe, for your continued support. Uh, take care. Have a brilliant week. Enjoy the sunshine. And I love you all. Bye-bye. to change when it was